When you go to buy the latest new releases nowadays, you have to wade your way through hundreds of different editions with various benefits which have no context, and so their value is entirely incalculable. You get collector's editions, deluxe editions, pre-order editions, season pass editions, super deluxe editions, upgraded editions, store exclusive editions, steam exclusive editions, it's enough to put anyone off. The games in the background are various games that I bought last year that came with various bonuses, with the exception of Elder Scrolls Online which I'm considering purely because the Colossus statue that comes with the new Morrowind expansion looks great. The number of editions available with games has gotten increasingly worse over time as additional content became much easier to add in the form of DLC packs, and things like season passes for promised content started appearing. Naturally, the most choice is available when a game is on its run up to release, and in this instance it's more than likely a pre-order, so when you see things like extra weaponry available if you pre-order, or additional characters, you don't actually know if they're worth anything to you. These kinds of small bonuses are usually part of pre-ordering a game as a little token of appreciation, or so it would seem, but previously these would probably have already Already been in the game regardless, but now they're held back as a secret sales weapon. While I'm not generally opposed to this kind of content as it's usually very minor, it is generally irritating and doesn't affect my decision on whether I'm going to buy a game or not. I do have an issue with it when they're holding back on significant content or content which holds specific relevance to the game itself. I have two examples of this, Rage being the first. When this was released they had the double barrel shotgun as a pre-order bonus, what I consider to be one of the core weapons of Doom, and could quite well have been one of the most important important weapons in Rage also. Fortunately I wasn't swayed, I didn't buy the game, and it didn't get a good reception regardless. The other example is Tekken 7 which is coming up later this year where one of the pre-order bonuses is an entire character. Fighting games generally rely on their roster for the most part and adding or in this case removing characters could cause balance issues as well as hide parts of the story. Pre-order bonuses in my opinion at least should be limited to items which don't affect the gameplay or story in any way shape or form, so things like skins are fine in my book, or at a push a small side quest separate from the main story would be okay. Another type of addition I have a problem with is any package which has a season pass associated. So not only are you pre-ordering a game which you don't even know if it's any good, but now you're also buying a load of DLC which hasn't even been created and possibly not even thought of yet. It just seems balmy to consider buying something with no promise as to what you're going to be getting for your money. When you buy a game you do at least get trailers and possibly some pre-release material which gives you an idea of what the game is about. But when you buy these season pass DLC packs you know nothing about what you're going to get. Some developers are at least starting to describe their plans a little with games like Doom claiming that you're going to get maps, weapons, equipment etc, but they still don't say how much you're going to get. You can tell that people are frustrated with the season pass setup when you look at the reviews of Civ 6 DLCs which people are frequently complaining that they're being drip fed one civilization at a time. I do occasionally get lured into collector's editions of games which usually contain a variety of physical items which I feel are slightly more quantifiable as they are usually pictured and give a better idea of what you're going to get your hands on. My most recent one being the Doom collector's edition which came with a 12 inch statue of the Revenant which incidentally was really well detailed and looks fantastic, though because of the small contact points between the statue and the base it does seem a little femmer. The reason I have less of an issue with these is because even if the game is bad the statue will still hold some residual value assuming it's well made, and things like art books are usually interesting to flip through and see how the game universe was created. I would prefer if it was possible to buy these kinds of things after the release of a game, but due to the nature of collector's editions this isn't always a possibility, so I usually restrict myself to games which I have a pretty good idea about, either through playing the beta or a previous instalment. While I have no interest in Mass Effect Andromeda because I've never played the previous titles before, I do like that the top tier collector's edition contains a fully radio controlled Nomad ND1. I'm not even going to try and justify it, but the outward quality of memorabilia that comes with games seems pretty high at the moment. And I am still looking at the Tekken 7 statue and thinking, that must have some kind of support underneath Ryu. The final type of edition, and perhaps the type I hate the most, is the store exclusive versions of games, because ultimately I'm only going to buy one copy of the game, I'm not going to buy several copies of the same full price game just to get tiny little bit of content. I almost didn't even bother buying Witcher 3 because of the amount of choice when it came to ordering it. If you bought a physical copy from Amazon you got a map with the game, if you bought it from GOG you got a digital map and some minor DLC. There was also a collector's edition from Game which cost a fortune but came with some interesting stuff. In my opinion this just seems counterproductive to selling games, you want to present the options to someone and let them choose whether they want to pay a little bit more and get some extra content. You don't want to cut them entirely out of content. The only time this actually worked out quite nicely for me was when I bought Battleborn, as there was a game exclusive version which came with a small figure, and it was already the cheapest place to buy from anyway, so I got more for less. 
the perfect combo. When you look at the tick boxes for some of the upcoming releases like the Elder Scrolls Morrowind expansion and Mass Effect, which have a full Excel chart to explain what you're getting or not getting with each version, I think it's gone too far. I do like to have choice when I'm buying things, but the amount of options is just getting ridiculous, and it's impossible to quantify and compare the value of the different choices because you don't even know what the base items are worth. I realise it's unlikely to get better, but hey, it's good to rant. What do you think about the number of options on offer with new games? Have you bought any collector's editions in the past, or do you ignore it all completely and just wait to see what the game is like? Let me know below, and thanks for watching.